In this video, which is a follow-up to Ball Translate, we have a slightly more elaborate animation hierarchy. You'll notice that there's a bouncing ball now that moves across the screen. So there are a number of animations that have been applied to this uh, sphere object as it moves across the screen. Not unlike the previous video, at the bottom of the hierarchy we find the sphere geometry. But now, in addition, you'll notice that we have ball translating, ball rotating, ball moving in the z-direction, and the ball deforming as it makes contact with the ground. If we look inside the select by name, you'll notice that we have the ball translate group. Nested inside of this is ball squash. Nested inside of that is ball bounce. Nested inside of that is ball rotate. And finally, at the base of the hierarchy, once again, we have the original geometry. If we should select the original geometry, you will notice once again there are no keyframes in the timeline. If we select ball rotate, you'll notice once again that there are only keyframes at frame 0 and frame 24. As the ball moves across the screen, it rotates and within the duration of our timeline here there are five cycles of 360 degree rotation. Just as previously inside uh, the ball translate file uh, we have something that's a recurring pattern here. If we go to the curve editor you'll notice that the ball rotate once again has been set up with a controller for outer range types. This allows recurring patterns to be automated through the software. If we go and select the group above that, Ball Bounce, you'll notice in Ball Bounce there are three keyframes. Those keyframes correspond to the initial point, which in this particular animation starts in the air, and the bottom of the parabola, when the ball makes contact with the ground, and the return to the upper portion of the parabolic uh, curve here um, at frame 24 when the ball um, is returned to its original height. Now if we were to take into consideration gravity and friction the parabola would begin to degrade over time and that's a matter for another video. The cycles here were left constant across the full duration of the timeline so there's no change in the amplitude um, of the parabola that the ball follows. If we should look at the curve editor for the vertical movement, you'll notice that we have one cycle here that corresponds also to the 360 degree rotation. So as the ball is falling, it's rotated 180 degrees when it hits the ground. And when it rotates back up to its original um, orientation, it's back to the top of the parabola. Now, you'll notice that there's a slight adjustment to the curvature here. And what we're trying to do is cause the ball to appear to move quickly when it hits the ground and then spring away. And so to do that, we're simply selecting the handles um, on our function curve here and making adjustments to them. And you'll notice as I make adjustments that it propagates throughout time. Now, because I want the ball to come to, down to the ground and snap back up quickly, um, I'm going to select my handle here and if we use uh, the shift we can grab the handles and make adjustments to the profile so that we're just changing the profile to be um, that in the Z direction and you'll notice now it's a little bit more sharp. So the ball might fall off and then accelerate and notice we're covering a lot of distance here in a short amount of time so accelerating very quickly hits the ground and it might actually come away from the ground a little bit more slowly as it um, restores its geometry we see that it's squashed um, not in this particular animation uh, cycle here but we'll see that it's squashed and so we want to account for some amount of time here as the geometry restores itself and then springs back up into space in fact uh, we may even choose to flatten the curve here on this side. Okay, so you can make adjustments to the profile. 
uh, that make the sphere appear to move up and down in a more realistic uh, way. If we go to the select by name and move to the level above, squash, you'll see in here that uh, we also have, and they won't show up, squash won't show up here in the timeline, uh, we'll also see that uh, keyframes are only on the first through the 24th frame. Now when it comes to something like squash, we'll need to move down to modified object and we'll find the modifier that's been applied, been applied here to the geometry. And you'll notice in the function curve here that the squashing only is occurring between frames 10 and frames 14 with the greatest amount of squash occurring uh, right at the bottom uh, of the par parabolic arc that this follows. We still have keyframes at 0 and at 24 to ensure that this doesn't slowly squash over time. So there's zero um, squeezing of this occurring at, at uh, this time and there's still zero squeezing of the geometry at this time and then once it makes contact with the ground uh, we'll see that it's squishing. Okay, so technically none of that is going to occur until the moment it hits. So we aren't necessarily going to find this mirrored in here like is shown at the moment. It might actually make sense to slide this keyframe over so we see no distortion until the moment we hit and then the ball restores itself as it begins to spring away. You'll also notice that as I made those changes that the profile here in the timeline propagated uh, across the full duration of my animation. This was added uh, as a controller out of range type just as in the ball rotation. And if you're uncertain what the modifier is that's been placed on the sphere um, grouping, it's a squeeze. And all that's been adjusted here is the axial bulge, so it causes this thing to be squashed. Okay, so thus far the rotation of the ball and the squeezing of the ball and the vertical movement of the ball have all been applied to groups without any translation. And the final part of this, once all of those other three have been accounted for, is to cause the squeezing, bouncing, and rotating ball to then move in some direction. And once again, the direction needs to take into consideration uh, the forces being applied to the ball and the, the geometries of the ball and so forth. So if I come back to my select by name, you'll find uh, once again at the top, ball translate. And in ball translate, we have a first frame and a last frame. And in this particular animation, no path was set up. It's simply establishing a keyframe at an initial position and a terminal position by turning on auto key and moving the ball. So once all of that has been set up as a series of nested groups, and we go ahead and hit play, we can see our more complex animation that includes um, rotation, squashing, translation in the vertical direction, and translation in the horizontal direction.